All right, let's make sense of how we graph a variation of a tangent function. And the basic tangent function with all the bells and whistles well, that we're gonna look at right now has y equals a times a tangent of bx minus c, where b is greater than zero. So where do we start? Well, the first place we start at is we try to identify where the vertical asymptotes are at. And how we determine that is we look at, on a period from negative pi halves to pi halves, the values of bx minus c that are in between those two values. So, in this particular case, we would have minus pi halves is less than x over 2, which is my bx minus a c. This determines the period. Let's reduce that down by dividing everything by 2. So I have negative, p, negative pi x is less than pi. So I have a period then of this graph going from negative pi to positive pi. The vertical asymptotes then will occur where x equals this first term, x equals the negative pi, and x equals the other term, the other end cap. So those are where my vertical asymptotes are at. They're not at negative pi halves, but rather they're at pi and negative pi. So if I were to graph this out then, let's make this a negative pi, um, positive pi, two pi, 3 pi, and so forth. So I have a vertical asymptote, a negative pi, and then it repeats itself, so I'll also have a vertical asymptote at 3 pi. All right, there's my guardrails. Next, we want to determine the x-intercept. The x-intercept is just a midway point between the asymptotes. Halfway between negative pi and pi is 0. Halfway between pi and 3 pi, 2 pi. Doing all right? Then we look for the values of some specific values we can find. One fourth and three quarters away from one asymptote to the other. That means at this point, that's one quarter of the way, one half we don't care about, and three quarters of the way. Kind of the midway points of the midways. Those values then become the ap either um, the, the amplitude or the negative of the amplitude. So here, one fourth of the way, my amplitude is a two, and I know this one's down at a negative two, so it's underneath because of the traditional graph. And then three quarters of the way, one quarter, two quarter, three quarters of the way, I know the value there is a positive, which will put it up here. Then from there, we develop a smooth little graph that fits these characteristics. And that's one period of this particular graph. And then if I wanted to graph another um, repetition of it, it would follow the same type of idea. So one fourth of the way between these two points or between the whole period, I have a value of negative two. Three-fourths away, I have a value of one. And there's another repetition of that particular graph. Notice my asymptotes, they do not let the graph cross over. Uh, this repeats continuously uh, to the right and to the left. And my key points, I guess the one key point to remember is that when we're trying to determine the vertical asymptotes, Notice it's not pi halves or negative pi halves and pi halves. That's not the vertical asymptotes. Rather, I discover where they're at by taking my value of the argument uh, and set a, a compound inequality over that. Once I use that, solve it for x, then I solve for x for both sides of it. And that becomes my vertical asymptotes. Y equals tangent of x plus uh, pi over four. The first thing we want to do in trying to graph this particular variation is to determine where the vertical asymptotes are at. And we did that by developing a compound inequality where the argument was in the middle. With negative pi halves and pi halves as the outer points. Solve this for x. So I'm gonna subtract negative pi fourths both sides. 
And then get common denominators here. So that's gonna be a negative two fourths. Take away one fourth gives me a negative three fourths pi. It's less than x, which is less than, that becomes two fourths pi, take away pi fourths. So there are my, that's my period. The period then begins with a vertical asymptote at the first point and a vertical asymptote at the second point. So we can start to develop a rough graph here of what we got going on. And so a key point, I want negative three fourths pi. So let's say here's a full pi. There's a full pi here, negative three fourths pi right there, quarter pi, probably right about there. So that determines my vertical asymptotes. So I have a vertical asymptote right here, and another one right there, and then I'll have another one, a uh, full pi distance over at 5 fourths pi. So if I just want to do one more and put one more right there, Five fourths pi, why not? Okay, there's my vertical asymptotes. The next part is to find the midway point because that's where the zeros are at or where it crosses the x-axis at. So what's halfway between negative three fourths pi and pi fourths? Uh, that would be negative pi fourths. We have a zero there. And then if we want to, halfway between pi fourths and five fourths pi is three fourths pi. So that's just if I want to do two repetitions of that. The next part is we want to determine what happens a quarter of the way through and three quarters of the way through. Because at that point, my value becomes the amplitude. So at this particular point, my amplitude is a one. So let's just put some ones on there. So I have a value right here, and then I have a value right there. Likewise, I'll have a value one quarter of the way in the next repetition at a negative one, and then three quarters of the way through of a at positive one. Now that I know that the tangent function goes um, upwards, left to right, draw a little bit of a smooth curve, approaching asymptotically on both of the asymptotes. And there we're able to graph y equals tangent of x plus, the tangent of x plus pi over four. I graphed it over two repetitions or two periods from negative three fourths pi to five fourths pi.